calls me out. Yeah. All right. I remembered. Starting the recording. So I'm going to hit the plus sign and then select table so I can put in my table of values. All right. We have the X values going into X1. And so the X values, what are the X values? The X values is the first set of data that you see, the horizontal uh, rows of data. The first row is your set of X values. Now, in Desmos, we're calling that X1. So you may want to call it X1 on your paper. It's up to you. But X and Y is fine. All right. So we're going to type in these values. So 12. Oop, that's not a 12. 13, 22, 31. Just be careful with the autofill. Because when I typed in 12 and 13, Desmos automatically populated the 14. And if I wasn't paying attention, then it's all over. You know, so 65, 73, 83, and 99. One of these days I'll remember to save my data set. Maybe today's that day. But I don't have to continuously type all this stuff in. Uh, if, if I were you, I might actually consider saving this anyway, because that, that's going to be a good resource for the test. Because you'll have a nice solved problem in, using Desmos. You know, because you could have all the work written down on paper. And again, we're thinking of every assessment in this course as an open notes assessment, you know, with a remote environment. So, you know, you got all the, the written stuff, but why not have the, the, the unwritten stuff, you know, like all the stuff that happened behind the scenes with a graphing calculator, a, a um, TI, whatever graphing calculator, you can't save your work. But when it comes to the, um, the case of like Desmos, you can, you just got to sign in call it something, so I'll call this regression. So after you sign in, you call it regression, and then you, you, have, you have it saved. And so now you can come back to it later on. So you hit that little, uh, I think they call it a hamburger, but you go into that, you can see all the things that I've saved along the way. You know, I got a bunch of things. Yoda. That I stole from somebody, but it, it's a, a, a graph of Yoda, in case anybody was wondering. But anyway, you got all this data in there, and it's nice to not have to type it all in again, especially if you got to reference it again at some other point down the line. Not hinting at anything, not saying, and I'm really not, I'm not, I'm not being coy. I'm not saying that we're going to reference this data again, but having data that corresponds with the work you know, to find a linear regression equation, quadratic regression equation, and so on. Having all that stuff set up and ready to go so that when you do it on your own, all you have to do is change the data and everything that corresponds with that is going to change automatically. That's pretty powerful stuff, right? So I have my data in, and what we have to do is determine using the calculator the best regression model and then describe or give a reason why the one we chose was the best. So. I'll start off with the, you know, your classic uh, Y1, get that tilde in there, is equal to MX plus B. So the model for a linear equation, so MX, but the X, it's X1, and then plus B. All right, so these are all the bits and pieces, all the necessary components for the linear regression model. All wonderful stuff, all right? For now, I'm just gonna state the R squared value on paper, all right? So I'm gonna kind of, I'll make a little table here. You know, if you're, if you're going for an organizational strategy, you could, you could probably do it any way you want. It's just, if you, if you wanna kind of do it in an organized way, a, a table of values ends up being a pretty good solid approach. Right, so I got my R squared. And you know, you could make columns and stuff like that if you want, but I don't think that's necessary. Right, so uh, 
All right. So that's the R squared value for a line. So I want to find R squared values for lots of things. I want to find it for a quadratic, a cubic, and so on. All right. Now you can look online and find the different models for all these things, but generally, if you know what each of these functions look like, then or if you have a general sense of the model, then you can just type it right in, right? So a quadratic function, you're going back to algebra class, it's in the form of y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. I'm about to type that, so if you didn't quite catch that, that's okay. So y1 tilde ax1 and square it plus b x1 plus c. All right, so that's your quadratic model. I mean, if you think about it, that, that should make some kind of sense because even if you don't have a whole heck of a lot of experience with function related math, even take pre calc and stuff like that. You probably you had to take an algebra class, and that's a prerequisite for this one. So, you know, maybe it wasn't last semester, maybe it was a while ago, but a quadratic is a power of two equation. So, it makes sense that this has a power of two in it. Now, it's just a question of okay, so it's got a power of two in it. Where's all this other stuff coming from? The a, b, and c. Well, those are all just coefficients. You can see at the bottom where it says parameters it's telling you what those coefficients are. So I can make a note of all that information, but since I'm looking for the best fit model, so I'm, I'm gonna write down the 0.9762. I'm looking for the, the model that has the best R squared value, meaning the one that's closest to one, all right? So I don't wanna write all that stuff down until I'm absolutely sure that I have the winner, all right? So, with that being said, I'm going to get rid of the highlight that I have on the linear because that, that's not the best option. 0.9722 is not closer to 1 than 0.9762. All right, so what I can do is I can put a big old X through the line because the line is not going to be my best fit option. And I already found one that's better. All right, we're going strictly by the numbers here for now. So, Later on, we'll talk about how context can be an overriding factor, but for now, we're just gonna focus on the, uh, the, the math, all right? So then, so that's my quadratic, you know? And, and you know, if it, if it helps, we can make little, uh, little notations here of what the general models are. I'll give a little bit more space. So, the line is, uh, let me go green for those students who are at home. We know that the line is following the form of y equals mx plus b. The quadratic is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Cubic is just going to start off with a higher power. So it's going to be y equals ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. All right, cubic is a power of three. Cortic is a power of four. So all you're doing is increasing the power every step of the way. So it's, it's more stuff to type in. That's the, that's the aggravating part. Uh, from a teacher standpoint, I'd say probably the most aggravating part is that you'll never really know just how complicated this is to do by hand. So you never really appreciate just how much of a time saver this is because all of you look at it and say, oh man, this is a royal pain. I gotta type in all this stuff. You don't know how many hours it takes to do this stuff by hand if you didn't have the technology. You know, if you actually had to do it by hand, no calculators, this is a nightmare, right? So, you know, like, you just gotta kind of take my word for it. But assuming that you are, 
it's a, it's a small price to pay to type in a few extra terms, right? And again, if I'm letting you save all this stuff, and by the way, even if I wasn't letting you save it, I'd, if I were a student, I'd, I'd save it anyway. You know, like I'm, I'm not gonna type all this stuff again. I'll just do it the one time and change the data. Work, uh, work smarter, right? That's what they say. So Y tilde A X one, you just got to be really painstaking about this because if you're not careful, you see, like I already did, I didn't put the one, things start going wrong. But if you're careful, then you're going to be fine. So just take your time and, and work through it. So B, X1, cube. So it, I, I glossed over this, but just to, just to make sure I hit on this idea, to get a power other than two, it's that A to the B power key, the one right next to the seven. So this, this jammy right here, right? That'll bring up the, uh, some other power that you can type in. You can also use, if you're using a regular keyboard, you use the carrot symbol, you know, uh, what is that? Shift six, that'll get the job done. But uh, for, you know, touch screens, you gotta be careful. Then to get out of it, you see how it's still up in the power. So if I were to continue typing, whatever I type in would still be in the power. To get out of that power, I hit the right arrow and that gets me out, All right? So plus C X one, this time squared. So that's easy, it's power of two plus D X one. plus E. All right, so, oh, I did a court, I skipped right over the cubic. Jeez, look at me. All right, well, it is what it is. I'm gonna write down the information now anyway, but I'm gonna do it again. What, what is wrong with me sometimes? I don't even know. So 0.9931 is what the quartic would be, but I got to go back and grab the cubic, right? So let me, I'll just fix that real quick, right? So the good news is you can edit. So this should have been a three. This should have been a two. This one should have been a one. And then everything else afterwards shouldn't have been, you know, it should have just been a D. Right arrow, right arrow. Look at this guy. Jeez. All right. So this this is the cubic. This is what it ought to have been. So we're looking at point nine seven six two. So we actually have a tie between quadratic and cubic. Quadratic was 0.9762, and so is cubic, right? So it's exactly the same. Well, it's not exactly the same. There's more decimal values that are just happening behind the scenes, but they're close enough that it's, it's, it's a tie, right? So the tie goes to the simpler equation. So if we had a choice only between quadratic and cubic, and they have the same R squared value, the simpler equation is the one with the lower power, really the one with, with less stuff. So we would go with quadratic if it, would if it was just the choice between those two. But since the quartic, and I'll, I'll retype that one again in a sec, but since the quartic has e an even better R squared value, we know that we're not working with quadratic, we're not working with cubic, right? So, so far the quartic is gonna be the winner. But again, let me retype. Uh, and just get that going. Let me see if I can. It's kind of a pain to copy out of that, so I'm just going to retype it. So A X one uh, to the fourth. plus B 
uh, it's hopping all over the place on me now. Just got to be careful. Sometimes you got to scroll it back into place. X one to the third. Or you could just believe that it's there and just do it blindly, but I, I wouldn't recommend that. C X one squared plus D X one. And then finally the plus E. Right. And then I got to find where I screwed up because something's out of whack here. A, X1, to the fourth B, X1 squared, C, X1. Is it the tilde? The tilde, thank you. Yeah, the equal sign, the tilde. Oh, jeez. You missed the easy stuff. You know? All right. Well, thank you. Thank you, both of you. I appreciate that. Because yeah, honestly, I was settling in for a nice staring contest with that, trying to figure it out, figure out what I did. And, uh, the next step would have been for me to exit all out and do it again, and that would have wasted everybody's time. So I definitely appreciate the help. Right. So we got that. And so far, we know that Cordic is the winner out of all of these possibilities. So now we look for exponential and logarithmic. All right, so those can be kind of challenging because if you don't know the structure of an exponential function, then it could be a little iffy. But generally speaking, if you just start typing in what you think it is, then, then you're going to be in good shape, All right? So you, you get your Y, you get your tilde, and then you can start with like, you know, just putting in, if you're going with exponential E, you type in an E and see, how, see if that starts correcting you to anything. But if you're ever in doubt, a quick Google search is the way to go. Because all you'd have to do, and, and this is kind of like um, troubleshooting 101 here, just type in Desmos regression, and then what it is that you're looking for. So let's say natural log. Nat tutel, no, natural. It should be the first thing that comes up. Now, that first thing that comes up might be somebody else's example, but you know what? That's all you need because now you have a little bit, little bit of experience with this. So all you'd have to do is take a look at, at their work. We know that we're expecting something with a tilde and we're expecting something that has a natural log in it somewhere. So you, you kind of have everything you need, all right? So there's that. It tells you what the model is and then you're good to go, all right? And if you're really, you know, like you're struggling with the exponential, for example, you can, you can do the same thing, you know? So you have the structure of the, the natural log, maybe you jot it down. So I'll just jot it down here. So Y equals, it's, it's really a log, um, L-O-G log, but we use natural log specifically, but um, I'll, I'll write it in both forms. So log, so A log, base E, right, where that E doesn't necessarily have to be an E, it could be something else of X plus B. And technically that X should be in absolute values because you can't take the log of a negative number, right? But the way Desmos interprets it using their own language, A, LN, LN is actually a universal term, but it's LN of X plus B, all right? And so for exponential, the general model is Y equals A times E to the X power plus B, all right? So, you know, if you don't know that, then it's the same idea. You, you just have a look in, uh, in a quick Google search and see what comes up, right? Because I'm not expecting people to be masters of uh, function-related mathematics here. It's really more so that you can apply the information. So, you know, would it be great if everybody knew all of the relationships and rules associated with logs? Of course. But then there's, there's a lot of things that it would be great if you knew. So uh, 
we use the resources we have available to us. So all you need to know at this point is when you're doing your Google search, Desmos regression, and then type in whatever the function is. So like exponential. And then usually, I mean, sometimes they give you a tutorial, but most of the time you're going to see a quick example that somebody else created. And that's usually all you need. Right. But let's say, you, I mean, sometimes Desmos does the quick example. So you look and you see it's A, B, X, you know, so, um, oh, that's, that's in, uh, in regular log form. And yeah, that's, uh, that's not the ideal one. All right. Well, we can try that one. That's fine too. All right. Well, anyway, so we can do the exponential one, A, times e raised to the x1 power plus b. Uh, and of course, it doesn't accept that. So I actually am stuck using the one that they've. All right, a times b to the x1 power, whatever. If Desmos makes up its own rules sometimes. Actually, I don't even know why this isn't working. Oh, cripes, I, I don't know, I don't know what's wrong with me. Forgot the one again, I don't even know. All right, well, I'll do it the other way in a second. And I'm sure one of those four comments is exactly related to that, All right? So I'll get to that in a minute, but um, the, the exponential one is point. 9431. Right. So that's that's one way you can do it. The other way is to use the base E. So, but this this seems to be perfectly fine. So we'll we'll just kind of leave it at that. Right. So I'll I'll change it to be more in alignment. Because when you do a search looking for it, you're gonna find this one before you find mine. So I'll just I'll give in and go with theirs. But for the natural log, y1 tilde, right? So again, we're going with this model here. Got that extra highlight going on. Do that a different color. So y1 tilde a times, you can use the multiplication symbol or you can just write the ln it automatically recognizes ln and starts it off in script, but then it auto corrects it into a function, right? ln of x1, close them up, plus b. And then you can see here that we have an r squared value of 0.9389. All right, as it turns out, these two options aren't as good because they're not close enough to one, All right? The, the one that's closest to one is the quartic. So everything else is not gonna be the winning option, All right? So it ends up being irrelevant, but you never know, All right? So let me pause the video. All right, so these are our possible models. We narrowed it down to the one that is the best fit. So now let's take a look at the, the actual graphs because all of this stuff is kind of happening behind the scenes, but we never really we never really did anything with the graph. So let's take a minute and look at that. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger so I can see. And I'm gonna I'm gonna do some zooming here. And when I zoom out, you see we got this god awful mess of nonsense here. But it's really not nonsense. It's more like a whole lot of conflicting models when it comes to the data. So if we refer back, you know, you can, you can actually flip the pages back, but if you at least do it in your mind to those, uh, those sketches of the different types of models, you had the linear model, which is the graph of a line. I'll just do, I'll just do one example of what a line looks like. I'll keep it simple. Anyway, then you have quadratic, which is your U-shaped curve, right? 
we were thinking back to algebra class. That's a, that's a U shaped curve or an upside down U shaped curve. Okay. The cubic function looks like this. Some of you have some experience with that, some of you don't. It could also look like this if it's going downhill. Quartic is generally a W shape, but sometimes it looks just like a parabola. That's a special case of it, but it's W or M shaped. When you increase the degree of a polynomial, so if we go to the fifth power, sixth power, seventh power, eighth power, whatever, it adds a little more, it adds more twists and turns along the way, right? So we're not just dealing with a U-shaped curve or a line, we're dealing with something that's got some nooks and crannies to it, right? An exponential function would look like this, or it could be going downhill. And a natural log is an inverse of that, typically looks something like this, right? It could also be a reflection of that. It could go the other way where it starts high and ends low, right? So along those lines. So these are what the, what the ordinary functions would look like. Now, what we're trying to do is when we're given a raw set of data, if I can actually zoom in here, when we're given a raw set of data, all this data here, we can try to fit a single line to the data points, we could try to fit a parabola, we can try to fit a cubic and so on, all right? And so by performing our regressions, that's exactly what's happening. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just, I'm gonna turn all of them off to start, if it'll let me. It's just kind of like uh, pushing me back up for some reason. Let me expand it. I'm gonna expand it the whole way and then do it. Ah, it's still, it's still weird. Almost like, ah, okay. Yeah, you just gotta get the placement right. So as I'm ex uh, uh, shutting them all down, you can see that the curves are all going away. So I'll do it one at a time so it becomes a little bit more obvious. So here's what a line would look like if it were passing through all those points. All right, it looks like it gets a whole lot of them, but not, not all of them, definitely. All right, there's some that we miss, but we get it. We get a good chunk of them. All right, the line seems to be a fairly good representative of the data points. All right, here's what the parabola would look like. The parabola seems to maybe get a little bit more of a a reasonable uh, approximation of the points, but you can see if I zoom out that there's a whole lot more of the parabola that's completely irrelevant. All right, so. At some point, we'd have to say, okay, forget about the parabola, but at least in the short run, on the interval of zero to, let's say, a 100 for x, on the x-axis, we're going to zero to 100, it looks like the parabola is a pretty solid fit, right? We could also look at the cubic, very similar to the parabola, which makes sense because the r squared values were pretty much the same. In fact, if I plot them simultaneously, they're pretty much the same except when you get down into this neighborhood where they start deviating, right? And over here, where they look vastly different from one another. So, but around those data points, they're pretty spot on to one another, right? So I can kill those, look at the cortic. That seems to have the best fit, it's grabbing the most points, but then it has a precipitous drop after 100. So we'd have to account for that in some way. In, in, our conclusions, right? That's the best fit one because then you look at exponential. Eh, it, kind of, it gets a lot of the points, but it also misses a lot of the points. And the same thing with the natural log, right? So we're getting a few of the points, but we're also missing a few of the points, right? So mathematically, we have a quartic as our best fit model but the context may tell us that, it, that something else is a better fit, all right? We haven't even discussed context yet, all right? For now, we're just focusing on the math behind it. So I'm gonna look at this model because this is my winner, and then I'm just gonna detail all of this information just out, out on paper because, you know, at some point I gotta, I gotta write my answer out. So the best fit model is the quartic,
Now, normally that has an equation of y equals ax to the fourth plus bx to the third and so on, but they're telling us that we have these a, b, c, and d values here. All right, so I'm gonna snag those puppies and bring them right in. Benefit of taking assessments in a remote environment is that these are these are things that you can do too. You know, you could you can write it pencil paper also, but if you have the ability to copy paste and stuff like that, I encourage you to do it because it's a time saver. You know, we all we all have other things when we're taking a test than we, that we would rather be doing. Well, in many cases than just taking the test period, but I would even say than writing out these funky decimals. You know, um, so why are you including um, those values? Oh, did I get the wrong ones? No, 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 no. I just don't know why. Like, does oh. that the question ask? I don't know. The best fit model is the cortic, and these are the values associated with the cortic model. Okay, so if we don't put those values, is it going to be marked wrong? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, now, something to be mindful of. Let me just check here. My parameters here kind of got, it got truncated. So it looks like I'm missing an E value. So it's all supposed to be there, but it's not. So there, there is that E value that, uh, that got cut off. So I'll have to figure out how to get that value back. Otherwise this is all for nothing. But the model should be, so we'll need E. I'll have to get that in there. So Y equals A X to the fourth plus B X to the third plus C X squared plus D X plus E. I mean, I suppose it is, oh, actually it turns out that E is equal to zero, so it's irrelevant, All right? So if E is equal to zero, they just, they just ditch it. They don't include it there apparently, but if the E was something other than zero, it would be part of the list. So that, that's good news. I, I thought the whole system was broken, so that, that's great, All right? So I'm gonna save make sure I don't lose all this work. I don't want to take that chance, right? But I have my, my, best, fit, uh, my best fit model, all right? So my best fit is quartic. It said determine the equation of best fit. We got that here, all right? We have the model of what the equation looks like and then all the values that correspond to the coefficients A, B, C, D, and E. So we're good there, we've answered that one. Y is the one we chose the best. It's got the best R squared value. I think that's pretty clear based off of the work. Uh, we can make a note though, just to kind of cross the T's and dot the I's. R squared is closest to one, poor quality one. All right, that's what we're going for there. And then the last part is really just asking for a prediction, All right? And that is, what weight would you expect a person who eats 100 brownies per day to be, right? So that's asking you, because you got to think about how we define our variables here. X is the number of brownies, Y is the weight. So the question here would be, what, if we're really kind of streamlining it into a workable question here, what is Y when X is 100. All right, so that brings us back to our Desmos calculator. And unfortunately, we, we gotta get these values in, all right? So all of these values that, that we just snipped and copied and pasted here, they still have to go in because I need those values in order to help me make a prediction, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in, now it's an equation, y equals the a value, which is negative point, there's four zeros, one, two, three, four, then two, six, two, three, five, two. And that's gonna be x to the fourth. And you wanna go with all the decimal values, all right? Otherwise you're gonna have an unacceptable amount of uh, error. So then plus, 
point zero zero five seven 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 six one. Oop, an extra one. X to the third. Minus point four three zero three one six x squared plus fourteen point six eight zero three x and then plus the e value of zero I could just put in a plus zero if I want but I could also just not I could just leave it leave it at that last uh that last x term but when I hit enter you can see hopefully that when I when I tap on the, the circle next to the equation and turn it off, I have that original blue equation there, that blue graph. But when I tap it on, it's overlaid with the red, all right? So now I'm done with this guy. And I'm actually working with the real equation, all right? And I save that because every time I type in a monstrous amount of uh, information, I got to save my work. Otherwise, I'm, I'm not going to be happy camper.